We are back with a brand new video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the news that Joel Embiid is now out for game three of the NBA playoffs versus the Miami Heat uh, as the Heat try to go into Philly and uh, steal game three from Philly's home court. Uh, we're going to be talking about that, how, you know, this changes the series potentially. Um, and the potential of Kyle Lowry coming back, maybe. He's now listed as questionable. All that stuff. So make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below. Also, check out the second channel. Just dropped a really good video today. Um, it was a quiz video. It was like, what, what NBA player are you? Um, so yeah, I dropped that video today. Uh, some more fun videos coming on that channel. So if you guys are interested in more, you know, NBA content, quiz content, uh, link will be in the pinned comment, as it is always. Let's get right into it, man. So like I said, the news came out today that Joel Embiid is going to be missing game three. Now, this is absolutely huge for the Philadelphia 76ers because they're not going to be without their all-star, uh, not just all-star, sorry, superstar center um, for three games um, in this series. And uh, Doc Rivers did not sound too optimistic last night when he was talking about it. He was, you know, he said that Joel sounded good on the phone, but like he hadn't cleared any of the protocols for concussion um, and you know, I kind of had a feeling he wasn't going to play. You know, I thought he would try to play because his season was on the line. But, like, if he physically is not clear to play, then, like, um, then, yeah, I, I, I didn't think he was going to play based on Doc Rivers' uh, interview. But he's currently listed as out, according to Shams. Uh, but apparently that can change until tomorrow. Um, so the 76ers have until tomorrow to update, update that if he gets cleared with any, you know, um, any protocols or whatnot but expect him to not play game three which is uh terrible for you know sixers fans out there um i've seen a lot of heat fans being salty that nba outlets have been talking about the Embiid injury more than the heat and uh they've been talking about harden struggling and can he carry a team is harden washed They're, they've been talking about that more than the heat's defense and actually uh you know how they've figured out a way to stop harden and um, how they figured out a way to be 2-0 up against the Sixers in a pretty dominant fashion. Um, you know, like, don't really mind this, man. Like, ESPN has never really showed the Heat love. Um, so, like, I don't really get why this is big news to people. Like, I'm kind of used to it. I prefer if people are not really talking about us. I prefer to be under the radar. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're a Heat fan out there, man, it's fine. They can talk about whatever they want to. The Heat will just quietly go about their business. Um, and, like... If the roles were reversed, I'm not, I'm not, I'm just playing devil's advocate right now. You know, I don't want people saying, oh, this guy is just, you know, doing, he's just, he's, he's trying to defend the Sixers. And nah, I'm just playing devil's advocate. Um, if Jimmy Butler was out and, you know, the, the, the NBA media was talking about the Sixers, you know, on how good they were after beating an injured Heat team, um, then the Heat fans would be upset. They'd be like, yo, like, why are people not realizing that Jimmy's out? So like, I can get why, you know, the media is talking about Joel's injury because it's a huge part of the series. Um, and as Jimmy said, you know, they're, they're a very different team without him um, on the floor. That being said, I still think we would have won the series with Embiid. Like, I don't want anyone to get that twisted. I had Sixers. I mean, sorry, I had Heat and Six before the Embiid news came out. Um, so I thought, you know, I, I thought that even with Embiid, you were going to win the series. Uh, but, you know, without Embiid, you know, it's, it's kind of looking like a four or five game se uh, series, which is really, really good because um, the, the other series uh, between Boston and Milwaukee has the potential to go down to the wire. You know, it's 1-1 right now. And there are injuries to both sides with Chris Middleton, with Marcus Smart. You know, no one really knows. I know Middleton's going to be out for games three and four, but and initially they said he was going to be out for the whole series. But now it looks like they if there is a game five, six or seven, there is a possibility that Chris Middleton might come back for those games. Um, and then the Marcus Smart injury was a new one. You know, I know it happened in game one and he had to miss game two because of it, but no one really knows the severity of it. Uh, so that's good for the Heat if they take care of business as soon as possible. Because, uh, like, if you take care of business in four or five games, you don't have to really worry about playing a team until, you know, after. Because guaranteed, the Cel the series between the Celtics and Bucks is not good. It's going to go six games at least. I don't see the milwaukee or boston winning four games in a row it's 1-1 right now i would be sh shocked if boston won four games in a row especially ha having to go into milwaukee twice and then same with milwaukee you know who, who were just coming off a, a a meltdown basically like they they got absolutely ran out the gym in game two i don't see any of those teams winning four consecutive so i think this is 100 percent going six or seven games um 
so you know it's it's best if the heat just take care of uh business and you know use this to their advantage and keep the keep their foot on the pedal now we did get news that kyle lowry is not questionable for game three um i maintained my stance after i said this last night i wouldn't risk it i wouldn't play him um we're up 2-0 especially with Embiid out like there's no reason to rush kyle lowry back and i think I mean, I would I would be pretty surprised if the Heat throw him out there in Game Three. I know he's not out and he's listed as questionable, which probably means he's fine now. But um, I still don't want to risk anything until we lose a game without Kyle Lowry. You know, if we if we lose Game Three, then you got to think about bringing him back. But like, you know, the, the Sixers don't have him beat out there. We should be fine. We shouldn't have to worry about not having Lowry out there. That should be a winnable game. I know it's in Philly, but still, like. We've shown that we can win without Lowry and for, for for like four consecutive games. So, um, yeah, like I wouldn't rush it, you know, unless he's like hundred hundred percent fine. Like if if he's if he's even like ninety two percent, like I still wouldn't rush it. I would I would wait for him to get fully rested and healthy. I think the Heat will do that too. They're experienced when it comes to this sort of stuff. So um, they'll probably make the right decision, the right call. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't try to rush Lowry back, uh, especially with Joel being out for game three. Uh, this really, really sucks, man. I wanted to play the Sixers at full strength uh, just because, you know, you get that competitive edge. Uh, and, you know, then if, if you are a person that really, um, if you are a person that wants the respect of the media, you know, they're going to get it if you play a fully healthy Sixers team rather than a team without Embiid. Because right now, that's, that's, that's literally what everyone's talking about is no Embiid rather than the Heat's, you know, defense or whatnot. Um, so I wish Embiid was healthy, but you know, at the same time, it's it's an easier series for us without without him, obviously, because he's so good. Um, but game three, expect Philly to come out with desperation. You know, they're they're if they if they lose this game, the series is essentially over because no team has come back from 3-0. Um, and yeah, like if they lose game three, like it, 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 it's over. So the Sixers are gonna have to come out with some some real desperation. They're gonna have to throw everything at the you know. Uh, they basically have to throw everything at the heat and uh the, the crowd's going to be into it that atmosphere in philly is one of the uh best atmospheres in the nba um as far as you know how they how the fans get on the team you know it's, it's a very competitive atmosphere in philly and um you know the crowd's going to be into it you know the team's going to be into it so you gotta make sure that you come with it and you do not get complacent or cocky because you do not want to drop a game you know and against atlanta we dropped game three um and now you're playing with fire here because if you drop game three against Philly, Joel might be back for game four and all of a sudden you're looking at a different Philly team. So you want to take care of business. You want to take advantage of Embiid being out for game three. You have to win this game. This is a must win game as, as important as any other game of the season so far because this is this can basically decide the series if we win this game. If we win game three, the series is over and we can think about the next one after we take care of business in game four or five or whenever we win that series. But if we lose game three, we're opening up a door for the Sixers to potentially get Embiid back. And I know, like I said, I think we can beat the Sixers with Embiid, but you don't want to take that chance, um, especially with, you know, some of the, uh, the, the the questionable injuries that the Heat have had with like Jimmy's knee and, you know, and PJ's calf and Tyler's ankle and all that stuff. You want to get as well rested as possible, especially because the other series um, on the other side of the Eastern Conference bracket looks like it's going to go six, seven games. So you want to, you know, take advantage of that opportunity as much as possible and um, try to move on to the next round as soon as possible, especially without Embiid. Uh, but like I said, the Sixers are going to play with desperation, man. I, I expect Harden is going to have to be aggressive um, in order for them to win. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure like the days of scoring Harden are kind of done. I don't know why pe people are expecting him to become that MVP type player again. He's just lost that step. But, you know, expect him to take at least more shot attempts. Um, and then same with Maxi. you know, both of those guys are going to get off as many shots as possible. Um, but the game plan is going to have to be the same to attack the pick and roll um, with either DeAndre Jordan or Paul Reed. I don't care who it is. Bam is going to have to feast against them. And then, you know, if, the, if they drop, then Tyler or whoever is the ball handler is going to have to feast. Um, shooters are going to have to knock their shots down. And if we do that, we're going to put ourselves in a good position to win. Um, they can have as many threes as they want. You know, the game plan should be, you know, give guys like Thibel and Niang and all these guys, they can take as many threes as they want. As long as Maxi's not beating us, as long as Harden's not beating us, we'll win this game. We'll win this game. So um, 
that should be the mindset that should be the game plan happy birthday to pj tucker by the way forgot about that but um yeah that should be the mindset going into game three but this is a huge opportunity for the heat to basically wrap up the series in philadelphia uh, but yeah i'm gonna wrap up the video there man i'll see y'all later as always